Coming up on Arirang News, the South Korean government designates a one-off national holiday, Monday, August 17th, to give people a break amid the pandemic. The hope is it could also boost consumer spending. The government announces a strategy for trade in the post-pandemic world, aimed at keeping exchanges open through agreements to free up travel and lower tariffs. And South Korea becomes the 10th country in the world to have a military communications satellite. It was successfully put into orbit on Monday by Elon Musk's company, SpaceX. It's 5 o'clock p.m. here in Seoul. Thank you for tuning in to Arirang News. I'm Devin Whiting. South Korea now has its first military communications satellite orbiting the Earth. It was launched on Monday and will provide secure and stable communications for South Korean forces. Kim ji has the latest. The ANASIS-2 satellite blasted off from Cape Canaveral Air Force Station's Kennedy Space Center in Florida on Monday on a Falcon 9 rocket made by U.S.-based commercial space firm SpaceX. The satellite successfully separated from the rocket 32 minutes after launch at an altitude of about 630 kilometers above the equator. It made contact with the Toulouse Space Operations Center 18 minutes later. In two weeks, the satellite is expected to reach its fixed orbit of 36,000 kilometers. With this, South Korea became the 10th country in the world to put a military communications satellite into orbit. It will replace the ANASIS-1 satellite used for both civilian and military purposes. The Defense Acquisition Program Administration says the new satellite will send data back two times faster than before and maintain quality even if it's subject to jamming attacks from enemy forces. The South Korean military will take system control in October after its manufacturer Airbus Defense and Space tests the satellite's functions and operability. After the tests, the satellite is expected to be in operation by the end of year. It will provide a constant, stable communications network for our military than before, particularly in terms of data transfer caused by jamming attacks from enemy forces. The project is part of a package for South Korea's 2014 purchase of 40 F-35A fighter jets from Lockheed Martin. Lockheed subcontracted the satellite manufacturing deal to Airbus in 2016. Kim ji Arirang News. The defense chiefs of South Korea and the U.S. spoke on the phone Tuesday to discuss the transfer of wartime operational control, joint exercises, and defense cost sharing. Seoul's Defense Minister Jung kyung Du and U.S. Secretary of Defense Mark Esper reaffirmed that they will not waver in pushing to transfer wartime operational control from Washington to Seoul. Esper is also expected to have told Minister Jung once again that South Korea needs to pay more for the stationing of U.S. troops in the country. But the defense ministry here says they have not discussed any pullout of troops. In a policy speech Tuesday for the newly inaugurated South Korean National Assembly, the floor leader of the main opposition United Future Party, Ju Ho Young, promised to make South Korea a more equal and peaceful country. He pointed to soaring real estate prices and instability in relations with the North. In his speech, Drew pledged to help people achieve the dream of home ownership by easing regulations and increasing supply, rather than imposing tighter controls. He also stressed the need for a fair society where opportunities and growth can be shared by everyone. Women and young adults, he said, need to be safe from discrimination. Again, suggesting a loosening of regulations, Drew said economic growth and income distribution should be achieved simultaneously. He also emphasized stronger national security to be achieved through the North's denuclearization. The South Korean government has designated August 17th as a temporary holiday for this year. Explaining the decision, President Moon Jae-in said this morning that in the pandemic, people need a short but valuable break. That Monday off will also make up for the Liberation Day holiday, August 15th, which falls on a Saturday this year. 
As for the government's Korean New Deal initiative, President Moon called for active participation from local governments, which he said will lead some of the projects. He said the government will revitalize local economies by creating sustainable jobs that will lead to balanced national development. Moon added that a meeting will be set up for the country's mayors and governors to speed up development. The South Korean government's outlook for the world economy post-coronavirus features three Ds, deglobalization, digitalization, and lastly, decoupling, referring to changes coming to supply chains. It's a challenge, but the government's announced a strategy to keep exchanges open. Lee kyung has the details. International business exchanges have been largely restricted due to COVID-19. But the South Korean government on Tuesday outlined its new post-pandemic trade strategy to help re-establish avenues of exchange. At the center is the so-called Express Passage System, which grants a special pass to key local business people for them to enter other countries despite entry restrictions. China is already on the list, but Korea aims to expand its contract with Singapore, Indonesia, as well as several Arab nations. South Korea also seeks to launch the pandemic-free passport to be used among ASEAN Plus three nations, a passport that temporarily minimizes travel and trade regulations during the pandemic. In the meantime, South Korea is promoting free trade agreements, or FDAs, with developing countries by using its new model dubbed KFDA. Conventionally, FDAs will require both sides to simply lower tariffs to boost the exchange of goods. But under the new model, each side takes a particular role. South Korea will provide development assistance in the form of technology or infrastructure, while developing countries will focus on opening their market for trade, the result of which would avoid disputes in certain areas of mutual interest, such as agriculture, and to build more sustainable economic ties. Lastly, in light of the rising digital market, Korea will enhance digital partnership with other countries to help local firms enter the global e-market. The government hopes that these measures could help South Korea preemptively respond to even greater changes in the future. Lee kyung Arirang News. Time now for an in-depth look at the market news this afternoon. And for that, I'm joined on the line by Mr. Daniel Yu, global strategist at Yuanta Securities. Mr. Yu, thank you for coming on today. Thank you for having me today. Well, stocks on Wall Street were up overnight, partly on hopes for a coronavirus vaccine. The Nasdaq in particular was up 2.5% to a new all-time high. What's the story in the global markets? Yes, as you said, uh, Dow Jones as well as Nasdaq all uh, was risen uh, yesterday. Uh, if you look at Dow Jones, it added uh, slightly, but uh, now Nasdaq jumped uh, by 2.5%. Uh, there were some questions about whether you want to buy the growth stocks or the value stocks. And because the the week before, the small caps and the uh, value stocks doing quite uh, sizable re uh, returns, uh, people were doubting and worrying about the NASDAQ or the growth stocks might be uh, taking some hit uh, going forward. But it seems that as this week started, uh, NASDAQ jumped. Uh, and clearly, the leading stocks are continue to lead the market. Um, the news come from the uh, the vaccine side, uh, the potential coronavirus vaccine, and also the further fiscal stimulus uh, in the U.S. had added the uh, strong movement of Nasdaq. Uh, and looking into uh, other countries in Europe, uh, we start to see quite aggressive boosting measure because the COVID-19 has affected negatively where the additional new patients rise were uh, very sharp in, in various countries. And, and because of that, uh, the aggressiveness of the boosting measure is actually happening at this current point in time. Uh, we think that um, right now is not the end of the so-called bubble stage. Um, we think that it is probably continuation of fourth industrial revolution uh, bubble stage, but probably on the beginning side. So we think that the U.S. market as well as other uh, growth stock-based uh, indexes, indices will be showing uh, further rise in a longer-term basis. Uh, in any case, at the short period of time, people are a bit worried about the, uh, the growth rate of global economy in third quarter because of the COVID-19 effect. Well, now, Korean stocks were strongly higher today, too. Is that just following on from Wall Street, or what's happening there? 
Yes, um, as you said, the uh, cost B is up about 1.36%. Uh, Costag uh, was up 1.1%. Uh, Korea advanced on Tuesday following the positive uh, news from the Wall Street, uh, as well as the uh, European uh, agreement uh, regarding the stimulus program. Uh, the potential COVID-19 vaccine and the fiscal stimulus uh, from the major countries are definitely affecting positively. Uh, Korea, because of the strong dependency on export, uh, the global economy recovery is a very important factor. Uh, right now, the domestic consumption numbers are uh, actually very good relative to what we've been worried about. So what we need is the export side, the global economy recovery, and it seems that the news flows coming out from the global side is positive in that uh, these vaccines and the fiscal and monetary policy would have positive implication for economic growth in the global scale. And, and that's why the cost has risen well above uh, 2200 level. We saw today that Korea's exports in the first uh, 20 days of this month were down about th almost 13 percent from the same period last year. That decline was led by semiconductors, cars, petrochemicals. What stands out to you in these numbers? Right. As you said, clearly this is indicating that the economic recovery is slower than hoped for. Uh, the South Korea's the export numbers coming in at 13 uh, percent decline year on year in the first 20 days of July. Uh, but of course, uh, if you look at the full month, uh, the number will be probably relatively less than that. But nevertheless, it is still a declining trend of the export growth rate. Um, the main reason for that is, is because of the automobile as well as the petrochemical-related export numbers are dropping quite uh, sharply, uh, where the petrochemical drop was 41 percent year on year. Uh, clearly, that is because if you look at the petrochemical price uh, or the, the oil price itself, it has plunged and it has risen back, but it's still at uh, less than uh, $40 range, uh, and that affects negatively. Uh, but as for the auto and semiconductor side, it is down by around 14% and, and 1%. Uh, uh, so that's not necessarily that significant. Uh, hopefully, with the additional electric car sales that we're expecting, the auto sales would probably gradually pick up. Uh, all in all, we need to look at further months of these export numbers to determine whether Korea will be showing a reasonably relatively better economic growth rate than other countries. But anyway, so far, because of a strong domestic consumption numbers, uh, we are seeing the economic growth rate decline to be much less than uh, other countries. So that's why we think that the Korean equity market has some more room to go up in the future. Got it. All right, Mr. Yu, thanks so much for coming on and sharing your insights today. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Now, South Korean industry giants Samsung Electronics and Hyundai Motor Group have been looking for a way to work together in electric vehicles and driverless cars. Their leaders met on Tuesday for the second time to discuss those efforts. Our Kim Jae-hee has this report. Two of South Korea's top business leaders have met to discuss working together on electric and driverless cars. Samsung Electronics Vice Chairman Lee Jae-yong and Hyundai Motor Group Executive Vice Chairman Jung hee sun met on Tuesday at Hyundai Motors Namyang Research and Development Center in Hwasong, south of Seoul. This was the second one-on-one -on -one meeting between the two heirs. They last met back in May at Samsung's digital interface plant in Cheonan City. One analyst says the meeting on Tuesday likely paved the way for the two companies to collaborate on not just electric vehicle batteries, but also driverless cars. If Hyundai and Samsung partner up, they'll be able to develop software along with high-tech electric vehicle components, giving them a competitive edge not only in the field of electric vehicles, but even in autonomous driving. Hyundai Motor Group's Jung hee sun has also been shoring up partnerships with executives of other local conglomerates that make batteries. In the recent months, he has met with the chairman of SK Group and LG Group. With electric vehicles quickly rising as a future growth engine, South Korean companies are expected to combine forces to become game changers in the industry. Kim Jae-hee, Arirang News.
that brings us to the end of this newscast. Thank you for watching. More live news coming your way at 7 p.m. Korea time.